Coming to you straight from the Rio Grande and beyond and beyond broadcasting to the four corners of the globe so grab your seat your coffee or your sundowner okay everybody here we go on point as always this is gloves off gloves off we're back at you in gloves off and today uh we have a great guest, Master Herdman, coming in here, and we're touching base on her trajectory in the martial arts because she's an icon, and um, people need need to hear her story and how it embellishes and promotes women be going into the martial arts, really, because you know we've been losing, I guess, grounds with with girls going into the sports at a young age, and I think now we kind of have to kick it back in and start moving it in there. So, number one. Thank you for being in the show. It's an honor. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Always an honor, brother. Anything I can do to help, too. Absolutely. Let's touch base a little bit on 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 you. How did you get involved in martial arts? You know, I get that question a lot, and honestly, I have a rather deflated answer. Um, I grew up uh, always loving and wanting to train in martial arts, and came from a less fortunate situation where. Uh, I couldn't really afford to take lessons. So once I became a, an employable young lady myself, a young girl, um, I signed up for lessons and I basically just never looked back. And that's been uh, over probably about 33 years now. So uh, I just loved it so much. And that was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the time under the direction of uh, Master C.S. Kim. And I ended up uh, having a school with him for about 10 years, me and my then husband at the time. And, uh, you know, I still touch base with him, but I've since moved around so much because of my career that um, I actually have my own federation and have for many, many years. But yeah, that's how I got started. Absolutely. Absolutely. How would you say martial arts now? Because back when we started, it was kind of like for every 10 guys, there was one girl that's which I'm sorry, you know? I just cut out there. What was the question? I, I said back when we started, it was always about ten to one, ten guys for every one girl that 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 came in into class. And now you start seeing a little bit more women in classes. I guess it's more the demographics, more women being involved in class in the classes. In classes, what would you say for those here uh, hearing the pod podcast and those girls out there? What would you tell them that are the benefits of the martial arts for them? For, for women specifically, um, you know, I love seeing young ladies taking martial arts. I absolutely love it. It's my number one uh, passion uh, for little girls into the younger ladies to train. And even if you just train for a small amount of time, you're learning so much and you're getting so much out of it that's going to help you in life. Um, in ways I probably can't even put into words. I mean, um, it's, it's an interesting question when people, you know, ask me about my career as a female martial artist, because honestly, once I got into it, I, I never really looked at myself as a female. I, I just was kind of this soul that was on a journey that wanted to make black belt, who wanted to make master, who wanted to make grandmaster. And I just never looked back. But you know, any any young female out there besides the self-defense aspect of it, it really will put you in the mind frame that you are uh, another person, that you don't have to feel like you have to compete against anybody in a discriminatory way because you are a woman or you're not you're you're not a man. Um, it just puts you in a mind frame of such confidence that you don't even think about that, if that makes sense. Well, for sure, for sure. And um and it gives you a a sense of self empowerment and self confidence, like you said, that yes, pushes most forward. Definitely. But how most definitely right? So how do we how do we break that stereotype of no, it's only for boys to for girls? Understand what I'm saying? For them to get involved, what would you say? Yeah, would be a honestly, great idea? Um, I don't know if it's something that's just in martial arts. I mean, I've been in a lot of businesses that were very male dominated. Matter of fact, most of my career has been a very male dominated career. Um, I just think a lot of times um, men will have to 
really become extremely educated, like they don't have enough issues to change the way they talk now. But, you know, it, I, I personally have never taken anything um, that personal with men over my career choices, whether in martial arts or broadcasting or whatever, whatever I was doing at the time. I, you know, I just really think that we're all just um, these souls and our bodies may be male or female, but that in our spiritual journey is enough to get us where we're supposed to be. And I really never got that frustrated. Now, there was a couple of times when I first began teaching as a first degree black belt that I know I had to earn the respect of the male students. But trust me, I earned it. <laughs> I, I taught the toughest class in my life and I only had to do that one time. <laughs> And I was in with the guys. So, you know, there's there's just something to be said about holding fast to what you think is your your truth and your right and not letting anybody, man or woman, stand in the way of what you know that you're called to do and what your wiring may be. Absolutely. Absolutely. And how you and I know you've been around in, in the U in, in the US in different areas. How have you seen the the martial arts? industry as per se grow or is it different from area to area that you've been in or is it basically the same or how do you look at it um you know i've been overseas uh, i was in japan and I, I i trained with a shotokan instructor there for a little while um and i really i really noticed that i was the only female student at that time that was probably you know a few years ago. that was quite a while ago but, you know, I think things are changing now with women. Uh, but in other countries, there really is more of a male orientation toward uh, training in martial arts. And, um, I, you know, as it continues to change, I think a lot of the uh, criteria will start to change. You know, I, I know that a lot of martial arts schools in the United States have, have really, over the last couple of decades, kind of changed their curriculum to be a little more female friendly. Because I, I, you know, I don't think that they they want to have women think that they're not going to be able to keep up physically with the men who train, and then even more so gearing martial arts toward children. Because if you are any kind of a school owner, you know that children is what's really going to bring in your your uh, your availability to to make a good living in martial arts. And uh, a lot of things in America has changed, and it's open for discussion as to whether or not they were good changes or bad changes. But there has to be kind of a happy medium where you preserve the tradition of what you're teaching and you're also making it very available to people of all walks of life, of all ages and both sexes. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. I couldn't agree with you more. And you have to you have to see that. And, and it's you're, you're correct. And a martial arts school that doesn't teach kids, you're going to have just a few guys in your class and one day it's just going to end. And yeah. uh, unfortunately, it's, and you're always going to have that small group. And they're, they're out there, those schools. And I'm not saying that they're not bad schools. They're good schools. But um, it's not, if you're going to make this your vocation, you have to teach kids. And they're going to have to be the majority of right. your enrollment, as you say. Because it, yeah. it, is, it, is, it has to be that. Then you have to bring in the women as well. And, but it's not because of the business aspect. It's more of that it's for both, for everybody, you know? I had an instructor used to say, you know, he used to say about Savat, he used to say, you know, Savat's for men, women, and children, except those that don't want to learn. Right. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> and I would always, I would always laugh because it's true, you know, it's for everybody except those that don't want to learn. And, and, uh, and he, he was right, but uh, things have changed a little bit. And what, how, now that you said things have changed, we're now in the post COVID. Right. Uh, what do you think now you've seen in your area what's going different or what's being done different in the martial arts? Um, I've noticed that I think most of the people in, 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 in our industry have gotten pretty much back to normal. A lot of them have actually seen quite a bit of a boost. I think COVID made a lot of people think about exactly what that bucket list is and martial arts may have been part of it and they're starting to come back in a very big way now. So, sure. um, I, you know, I know COVID had its setbacks, but for a lot of people, it did kind of kick them into gear. And, and as soon as it's over, it's like, well, let's get going on this because who knows when we may have to 
to quarantine again. I, you know, I don't, I don't want to live my life having to worry about not ever achieving a lot of the things that I set as a goal for myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that that needs to, yeah, that's, that's something that's, that's, that's in front. That's in front. That's yes. in front. How do, how, from the styles that you did, did you do more Korean based martial arts? Yeah, I stuck with uh, only one art form, and that is Tung Sudo, which is traditional Korean hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's based sure. out of Korean military. Um, a lot of discipline, a lot of heavy respect, and a lot of protocol that went with it, and I still teach it that way. Um, that's, you know, I mean, I've incorporated some things over the course of getting a little bit older. Uh, you know, I do a lot of Pilates now and some other uh, types of exercises and and add a little bit of more cardio and stuff like that to make it a very well-rounded program. But for the most part, I just am a, I'm a traditionalist. I love it. And I just stick with the traditions. Absolutely. Absolutely. And is, you know, I'm glad you said Taekwondo because I, I remember when we used to live in Louisville, Kentucky, and they stuck me in a, in a uh, Tangsudo school, sorry. Mm -hmm. And they stuck me in a Tangsudo school. And all of a sudden it went from Tangsudo to Murukwan. And then it changed to Taekwondo and then everybody was doing Taekwondo when I go, but I'm glad that uh, to hear that Tang Sudo is alive and kicking. Yeah, we're, we're still out here. Uh, people don't know this, but um, in, in over in Korea, uh, Tang Sudo is the more prominent art form. Taekwondo is not heard of that much in Korea, but in America, it's different. More people know of Taekwondo and they're not as familiar with Tang Sudo, but um, you know, it's, it's, there is quite a difference, even though they're both Korean based, um, there is a, a, a big difference in, um, a, a lot of what is put importance on, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And that'll be a discussion for another day, but I do love Tung Sudo. I do love the hand-to-hand -hand combat. I still teach a lot of it, um, in seminars. I'm going to be traveling a lot this summer doing a, a, a Hapkido seminar, which comes out of Tung Sudo training, Tung Sudo teaches a lot of the different um, wrist grips and things of that nature. So yeah, I still, I still hang in there and do what I love to do best. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm glad, I'm glad you're, you're out there. And I'm, and I'm glad, I'm glad it's going on. It, it, how can I go to, it's, it's a pleasure to see, you know, that uh, the tradition is still kept up and alive. Okay. Right, it is. And if folks are in your area, because you're, you're right now in the East Coast, how can they go to your school and be a member? Or... If you're interested, um, I will give you my contact information and maybe you can post it. Uh, but you can go to I'm all over social media. You can DM me. Uh, you can also uh, email me at, at uh, Karen Eden at CenturyLink.net. Uh, and I'll be able to work with you and give you the information that you need. And um you know, otherwise hit me up in the chat room or whatever. Either way is fine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you for continuing to do what you do. Like I said, you're an icon. And, I appreciate uh, that. And, uh, I appreciate that. And um, all the respect, because it's, it's hard to see. You know, I have daughters. Okay. And, you know, and they grew up so far in the martial arts. All of a sudden they said, no, forget it. But it's not for me. Good. You know. Some of them didn't, didn't try, but for, and I see girls that, that have been with me for the last 15 years, you know, or so, and they continue doing it and continue moving forward. And it's a rare, it's rarity, but we need more of it. And that's what we need to push. Right yeah. Now. We need, well, you we know, girls, girls go through this thing uh, once they get to about, I don't know, sixth grade up until they're probably in the early twenties where they're very self-confident. They have a, the very, uh, what's the word? The very, um, there's something about them where they, they just, they're, they're embarrassed and, you know, they, they don't want to go out there and do something they think it's going to be embarrassing. So <laughs> uh, all karate instructors have struggled with that, with that age of girls. It's like a big gap in girls. It's very rare um, that a young lady going into that, her teenage years will stick it out. So if you have a female student like that, you've got a rare student, you know, it's, it's just something where they're just so, self-conscious of of who they are at that time in their life um but you know once they get past that you know it, it's 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 the same as as ever i've had classes where i've had nothing but women i mean just nothing but women maybe it's because i'm female i don't know i don't pay any attention but then i've had classes that were nothing but men so 
Um, it's interesting how that works out, but you know, there's something in everybody, I believe, that really wants to be the best that they can be. And I know martial arts can help them. And also, Professor, before we go, if I could just let everybody know where I'm going to be in, um, in my, my seminars, I'd appreciate if you give me a chance to say that. Oh, please do so. Okay, well, first of all, I do have four books out. Um, um, one of them is a major publishing with Simon and Macmillan. It's, uh, if you've read The Idiot Guides, it's The Complete Idiot Guide to Taekwondo. Um, I, being Tung Sido, I co-authored with Keith Yates on that, a very respected martial arts writer and um, uh, Taekwondo practitioner himself out of Houston. I have, um, I am a martial artist and they call me master, are both available through Century Martial Arts. And they did, they actually uh, sprung off a product line with the popularity of the book. So there's products and t-shirts and everything to go with those two books. And then I have a self-help book called Will I Ever Feel Happy Again? And um, people don't know this about me. Well, not everybody does. I'm actually a clinical pastor and seminary graduate. And this book is something I wrote to help people who've had to survive the suicide loss of a loved one. So that's Will I Ever Feel Happy Again? Those are my four books that are out right now. I still write for martial arts magazines and I've had uh, two columns uh, over 20 years in a couple of magazines, including MA Success through Century Martial Arts. Sure. Um, I'm headed to uh, Radford University to be a female professor at Karate College this weekend, the 25th. If you're in that area, you can contact Jerry Beasley. I'm going to uh, Vegas uh, July the 14th, teach a Hopkido seminar with Bill Superfoot Wallace. He's teaching a seminar and that's at the AMAA martial arts event in Vegas. You can see Jesse Bowen for that. And I'll be emceeing uh, that, that award banquet as well. And then I've got uh, the Black Dragons Fighting Society in Kentucky. I'll be doing a seminar there. And you can see Don Miskell for that event if you'd like to go. That's going to be August the 12th. And then October the 7th, I'll be at the Sport Karate Museum in Houston. Uh, I'll cool. be speaking at that dinner awards program there. You can see Gary Lee for that event. And one more professor is next October, October 2023 at the Sport Karate Museum will be my personal roast. So hopefully people will be nice, but they're going <laughs> to say some stuff about me. And so if you want to go to that, you can see Gary Lee for that next year as well. Thank you. I absolutely. appreciate that, Professor. Absolutely. No, absolutely. And that's, like I said, uh, much respect because because um, you've been out there, you've been ahead and you've been leading and continue doing that. Because un 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 unbeknownst, we might do work and we do not know who we touch. And you've yes. touched through your work, you've touched a lot of people out there and a lot of women have continued with that. I, I'm very, them, very humble, very humble. Thank you so much. Okay. And much peace to you and much peace, peace to everybody out there and you guys out there stay safe and we'll do it again. We'll do it again Thanks after soon. let's look around September for you to tell us how those events went and we'll take okay. it. Okay. Let's hook right? back up. We sure will. Okay. Thank time. you so much. God bless you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Till next Bye -bye. time. Peace. Today, in America, more than 5.5 million men, women, and children train in a martial art regularly. Bui Tarun Academy has been serving Laredo for over 30 years now. Our adult classes are geared for producing the best in you, teaching you street-ready techniques. With the arts of Savat and Kinpo, you'll learn the traditions of these sciences of combat as passed down professor to student. Hello, my name is Jaime Garcia. I started Savat when I was 17 or 18. Uh, I'd like to say it was because I was in search of knowledge, but truth be told, I, I joined Savat because I got my ass kicked in a bar. My, my mouth was writing checks, my ass couldn't catch cash, so I figured I should learn how to fight. Um, I was looking through, the, looking through the paper, trying to find someone that I, that I could really learn something from, and I came across Buitron's school. Even though it was on the other side of town for me, um, I wanted to go someplace where I wasn't going to be wasting my time. So I came by, he was, he was nice enough to take me on as a student, and um, I started learning. Um, I went all the way up until I think it was white glove, pretty consistently. As a matter of fact, I think I even failed one glove because one year I wasn't prepared enough. I believe it was my green glove. 
So I had to take my green look twice, but definitely didn't stop me from coming back because that was definitely my, my fault. But I kept coming back year after year and um, I loved it. I had to stop when I was about, I was about 25, 26. I had to go to school, I had to go off to college, you know. But I never forgot what I learned here and I promised myself I would always come back. I just had to get some life stuff done. So I went to school. Um, so I definitely not only gave me the confidence to do so many other things in my life, but it also got me out of a lot of trouble <laughs> that I admittedly got myself into. But definitely one of the most important things I ever learned in my life was how to fight. I finally came back, um, even though I live in Austin, which is a good three, three and a half hours away, I still make the time to come every month to come and learn because it's, it's one of the best decisions I ever made in my life, one of the best things I ever did. And um, I believe it gives a person something that the society is very much missing these days, which is a discipline and a drive to go forward, drive to keep doing what you're doing. And I believe in it so much, I'm just waiting for my kids to get old enough to hopefully start doing it themselves. And uh, yeah, best thing I ever did in my life and I wouldn't change it. Come train at the best kept secret of Laredo. Give us a call for your free evaluation at 956-401-4868 or check out our website at savat.biz. Follow us on YouTube and Facebook.